folks. Wait and see who comes in before we start talking. Hope everybody's doing great, man. It's been so busy for me. Oh my goodness. But I'm enjoying the day. I am enjoying the day. Want to say hey to those who just came in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. What's up, Sylvia Fleming? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's going on? What to see? What's up, Re? Re, Re in the building. What's up, Re? <laughs> Brother Johnny Numbers, how you doing, man? All right, all right. I see y'all coming through. Hey, Ernisa Barnwell, what's up? What's up, Mayor? How you doing? We need to talk. We need to. We need to collaborate. We need to network. All right. Juanita Harper, what's up, Cuz? That's my cousin, y'all. Cousin Buzzing in the building. All right, all right. See if I can get this thing moved over or something because I'm, I don't know if I'm centered. All right, am I centered yet? Hold on, hold on. I think this is about right. There it is. I think I'm centered. I think I'm centered. We're getting ready to kick this thing off. Thank you for sharing, Anissa Barnwell. Yeah, it should be centered now. But folks, if it's going to be, it's up to me to fulfill my dreams and possibilities with dedication and motivation to inspire thousands from all nations. When times are tough and breaks you down, just smile with toughness and rebuild from the ground. During tough times, adversity is a lot. Just remember, time flies, but you are the pilot. Hey folks, hope everybody's doing great. I'm Dana, good to see you. Uh, I just wanna keep this very short as possible, but what I want to talk about, hey Eric Davis, I want to talk about something that's very important to us all as African Americans in this country. Okay, um, I'm gonna get right to it. No announcements, none of that. I'm just going straight to it. So here we go, folks. Listen, black folks, we need generational wealth. We need generational wealth. I know you guys know what that means, but in case you don't know, let me tell you what that means. That means generational wealth, meaning after you and I are gone, families, and generations after us and our family will not have to worry about nothing. You know, there's a saying, a saying that I posted a few weeks ago. It says, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat in a day. If you teach him how to fish, he'll eat a lifetime. But if you teach him to own the pond, his family, will never struggle. Isn't that something, man? That's amazing, isn't it? So that is very, very important for we need to have generational wealth. I will see other ethnic groups. And how did I come up with this conversation with you guys? It's because I'm doing business. I'm doing deals with people who are of other different ethnicities. And I'm going to tell you something. You talk about these folks, these Americans who, met, who are billionaires and stuff like that. I'm going to tell you where the real wealth is, folks. The real wealth is coming from over in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the Arab money. That Arab money, folks, I'm going to tell you, those folks in, 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 Arab, in the Arab um, regions, they have so much money. Like they have so much money that they are able to provide business lines of credit <laughs> worth billions of dollars. Let me tell you, so, as a matter of fact, one of those people's over in, in Arab country, they own a yacht that is worth the same net worth as Donald Trump. Did Donald Trump around $4.5 billion? There's a guy over there in, in, in the sheep owns a yacht worth $5 billion. The wealth is over there, folks. Let me tell you something. Those people got generational wealth. What's the difference between being rich and being wealthy? The difference is <clears throat> when you're rich, you don't have to work for anyone anymore or you don't have to work anymore. But when you're wealthy, generations don't have to work anymore. So we need to establish generational wealth, folks. And let me tell you something. I, it, it, it irks me so bad when people say things like, well, money don't make you happy. Money don't make you happy. First of all, if that's where you are, get your broke ass away from me. I don't want you on my podcast. Stop listening to what I'm saying right now. Matter of fact, just delete me. I don't have time for broke ass people with this cop out mentalities, but I'm going to address those those uh, uh, those cop out statements right now. 
Come on. Money don't make you happiness. Well, my question is, when the last time brokenness bought you anything? You see, see, people use cop-out statements to keep them from getting off their ass and building for a future. They use cop-out statements. Another one that they use, money don't grow on trees. Actually, it does grow on trees, idiot. What do you think paper is made from? Okay, another one that they like to use, you can't take it with you when you die. What the hell do you think I'm talking about generational wealth for? It's not designed to take it with you when you die. That. But it is designed for you to enjoy it while you're here and to leave it behind as a legacy to those after you when you die. That is the difference. That's what it's made for. And let me tell you what else that you can't take with you when you die. You can't take poverty with you when you die. So you have a choice, folks. One, you can leave generational wealth or two, you can leave generational poverty. So if those are the cop-out statements that those cop-out statements make sense to you, get the hell away from me. I don't, it's contagious. I don't want to see you. Get out of my face. Okay? We're talking about something serious here. And we're talking about uplifting a whole nation of African American people that needs to be uplifted, needs to be liberated, needs to learn how to generate money, wealth, and 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 know how to set their families up so they won't have to create GoFundMe accounts to bury them with. All right? So, number one, first thing you need to do in, in our step to generation to, uh, excuse me, my hair is getting long. I'm about to cut it so and so. You see me lifting forward a little bit because I'm pulling it as it's in the, between my back and the chair. But, anyhow, where am I going at? Let's start with number one. What is the first thing we need to do to start building generational wealth. First thing you need to do is change how you're thinking. Just like I went through those cop-out statements that people like to give out. You can't, money don't buy happiness and money don't grow on trees or you can't take it with you when you die. Those type of, t those type of statements, you got to change from that. Because the same people, and let me talk, and, and particularly those who are in areas that's being gentrified. I've talked to a lot of people who live in gentrified areas and most of probably like 80% of them, about 80% of them is saying things like, well, it ain't about money. Shit. Tell that to the people who are gentrifying you because they believe in generational wealth. That's why you're being moved out. It's not that you're being moved out because society hates you. You're being moved out because you refuse to do anything about it. And it's not about going around with picket signs talking about, hell no, we won't go. Those Martin Luther King days are gone. You have an opportunity today to take responsibility of your own life. Take responsibility of your own family. Take responsibility of your own community. Step up. Be a goddamn old man and woman. Stop sitting back expecting the government to liberate you. Let me tell you something, folks. I found that many people depend on the same system that's keeping them poor. The same system is keeping them poor. Get out of that mindset. You got to come out of that thing called the box. You got to come out of there, folks. As a matter of fact, stop thinking outside the box. Start living outside the box. And when you get out of that box, burn the damn box down because it's doing you no good. OK, stop depending on religion, politics and racism to liberate you because none of those three is going to help you. None of them until you step up and do and handle your own affairs. You know, people talk about and what's another one? Oh, money is not important. Really? Well, let's say you quit your job and see how that works for you. Tell that to your kids who depends on you to bring them Christmas gifts every year. Tell that to your kids who depends on you to feed them every morning, to put clothes on their back. If money is not important, these people say these things to keep themselves from, from getting off their ass to going to work and building their legacy, building their empires. See, we too busy worrying about love. We want to find somebody to fall in love with. See, we looking for love while everybody else, other ethnic groups, and other races is building empires. But we run around here trying to find somebody to love us. Nobody ain't going to love you. Nobody ain't going to be in love with you. Until they see that you are somebody with substantial uh, 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 
business acumen and it's going to go out here and handle your business. Period. Stop playing with your life. Stop playing with your kids' life. You know, people say, oh, my kids are important. My kids are my why. Really? But prove it. Show me that they're your why. Okay? So, <clears throat> there, are two, there are two choices that we have every single day when we wake up. And we have many choices. But there are two that we can never, ever get away from. What are those two choices? One, accept circumstances as they are. Or two, take the responsibility to change them. Period. So, with that being said, folks, uh, 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 we need generational wealth. We come a long way. We're talking about over 400 years in this country. And we don't own a damn thing. We don't own a damn thing. You know, somebody introduced a book to me. And I'm going to tell you what the book says. The book says, the book is entitled, Why Do White Guys Have, Why Should the, Why Do That guy, White Guys Have All the Fun? Matter of fact, let me see if I can pull it up right quick on Amazon. Hold on, folks. Just bear with me here. I can get, I can get to it quick. I'm going to make sure I get the title of this right. Hold tight. All right, here it is. Right here. I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to blow it up. Here we go, folks. This is the book right here. Why should white guys have all the fun? You guys see that? You guys see that? Make sure you get a good look at it. That's the title. I want y'all to order this book. I want everyone, you never want Leslie Tutwiler, order it. Lardy, uh, Brother Kenny Carey, order this book. Get it. It's on Amazon. It's about 20 bucks. Why should white guys have all the fun? Okay? Now, why did I why do I want you to get that book? Because other ethnic groups are building empires while black folks went around here trying to find love. Let me tell you something. And a guy named Grant Cardone said this perfectly. He said, You out here looking for love, you're broke. Point blank, folks. Start building generational wealth. Find your niche. So find, that's the first thing to help change your mindset. Pick up a goddamn book and read it. You know, 80% 80, 80 of college graduates never pick up, pick up a book again to read. Pick up a book and read it. Just get that book. Why should white guys have all the fun? Another book to pick up and read is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And another book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Okay, another one is called 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class. That is written by Steve, they call him Steve Seibold or Steve Seibold, one of the two. All right, pick up my book, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life by Jay Lee. That's also on Amazon. Uh, Books a Million, Jet.com is also on uh, uh, Amazon as well. Okay, Barnes & Noble is out there. Get these books, folks. Start feeding your mind with things that's going to help liberate you instead of feeding your mind with a lot of nonsense and bullshit that you see on social media. Everybody today is more concerned about Lizzo's big fat ass rather than putting something in their mind that's going to stimulate the mind and help you get to the next level. That's our problem. That is exactly what our problem is. Who gives a shit about her tweaking with her big thong and this ass and all? I don't care about that shit. That had nothing to do with me. But what has something to do with me is building generational wealth. I have a lot of nieces and nephews that I'm going to help in business. But they got to earn it. Just because they have the title of niece and nephew doesn't mean that's what's going to be given to them. They got to earn it. They, gotta have to, they have to go to some seminars. They're going to have to do some reading. In order for them... To, to, to withstand the type of stuff that I'm eventually, when I start getting my stuff in line, I have several deals going on right now. One, uh, two, three, four, five, five deals I'm working. My head, my mind is, is boggling, man. I mean, I go from one project to the next all day, every single day, weekends. I go from one project to the next. Some people say, oh, man, I can't do all that. It ain't worth it. Well, if it's not worth it, I want you to go and tell your family that it ain't worth it. Hey, man, look, building this generation of wealth, y'all ain't worth it. Go back and tell them that. Tell your kids that. 
The kids that you got to take care of. The kids, when they get sick, that you got to pay money to get them. Because your health care ain't going to cover 100% of your stuff. Tell your kids that, that you have to take care of. Okay? Tell your kids that, that you got to feed. Matter of fact, you got parents that's, that's like older, elderly. They're in homes right now that you still take care of. So go, go and tell them that. Okay? Look at them in the eye. Watch their face as you tell them that they're not worth you going out here and building a generational wealth for your own time, for your whole entire family. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Get out of your head. Get your head out your ass and put your head in some books. Change how you're thinking. Get out of the, get away from people who don't want nothing in life. You know, I was listening to Les Brown a few years ago and he talked about a couple who had broken up. Wife was divorcing her husband. And they were in the same room at a seminar. And he heard the guy say to him that his wife doesn't want him anymore because he don't have anything. And when he went over, by the time he went over to the man's ex-wife or, or soon to be ex-wife, she said, I heard what he said. It's not that I don't, uh, I don't want to be with him no more because he don't <clears throat> have anything. I don't want to be with him no more because he don't want anything. See, that's the difference, folks. Life... It's 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. Huh. Huh. Come on, man. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. So how are you responding to life right now? You're going to face challenges. Yes. You're going to have some hurdles that you're going to get over. Yes. You're going to have people who are going to lie on you, lie to you. Yes. Karma in the universe have a place for those people. Your only responsibility in life is to focus on abundance and prosperity. That is all. If you focus on those two things, folks, if you do the things that you need to do in your life to get you to the level of high abundance and high prosperity, then everything else will take care of itself. Even the money will take care of itself, folks. <clears throat> Come on, man. Y'all got to wake up here. People allow the wrong stuff to, to entertain them. They, get, they are entertained heavily by bullshit. Believe in everything they believe they want to believe on social media or in the media. You can, okay? <clears throat> and those people that's giving you this money, they making millions and millions of dollars off of the ignorance of the, of the population. You know, there's a rule that Robert Kiyosaki talked about this rule a long time ago. It's called the 1090 rule. Do you guys know what the 1090 rule is? The 1090 rule is when 10% of the population earns 90% of all the money. And 90% of the population is fighting over 10% of all the money. That's why you see people on the job snitching on one another. They're trying to impress the bosses because they want to get uh, raises. Or they're trying to get promotions. So everybody on the bottom scraping and fighting one another and trying to see who's going to be the, the highlight one to get promoted. Because that's 90% of the population fighting over 10% of all the money. While 10% of the population earns 90%. And guess what? The 90% of the population, they all works for the 10%. My quote went out today. Those without goals generally work for those who do. Put some goals on a piece of paper. P post those papers up around your house where you can see them frequently. And those goals are going to hold you accountable. Put them, on, put them at your door where you're going to walk out. And you get to see those goals. When you get to your job, post them up in your job where you're going to see them. When you go to bed at night, post them goals on your ceiling. So that's the first, that's the last thing you see at night when you go to bed. And it's the first thing you see in the morning when you wake up. Let those goals be in your DNA, folks. You can instill things in your DNA if you do it enough time. Just you got to have patience with it. Nothing is going to be get rich quick. Nothing is going to be overnight. It takes time. Personal development takes time. Why does it take time? Because it's going to call for you to be uncomfortable during the development. You're going to have to do things and think in certain ways that you're not going to be comfortable with thinking. I was never comfortable at one time with cutting off people who don't want to do things special in their lives. That was a hard thing for me. 
I kept people around. And a lot of those people are unethical. They thieves. They liars. They cheats. They will stab you in the back with a butcher knife this long if you allow them to. But the only way you allow them to do it is that you keep spending time with them. That goes for you ladies just keep sleeping around and dating these no good dudes. Come on, man. Put your priorities right. It's okay to follow your heart, but take your mind with you. Take your brain with you. Everything must start from the brain, not the emotion. If everything is, 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 is being done based off your emotions first, then that's a, a, a disorder. It's called lack of impulse disorder. If you need to get help, fix it. If you're operating on emotions first before you getting facts, that is a disorder. That is lack of impulse disorder. Look it up. Google it. Get your mind right. You get your mind right, you get your money right. You get your money right, you get your family right. You get your community right. Why is that? It's because how you do one thing is how you do everything. It's called habitual. It's called habit. Come on, folks. And guess what? Habit becomes culture. There are a lot of people who are impoverished because of culture, the culture of poverty. But you can break the chain. Why? How, how can you break the chain? You have to start thinking differently from those before you. You have to start thinking differently than your family. You have to start thinking differently than those in your community. When you start to think differently and you start to have your certain level of success, then you got to come back to that family and to that community and instill that same thing in that community. You got to get everybody on board <clears throat> when you get your wealth going, when you get your success going, your abundance and prosperity, all of that have to take part in your development, folks. All of that have to take part in your personal growth. But you're not going to grow without resistance. No, you are not going to grow without resistance. See, the biggest problem people have is thinking they're not supposed to have any. You're going to have big ass problems. And if you're an entrepreneur, I'm going to tell you one thing else. Anything that could go wrong with your business, it will go wrong with your business. But it's not about the failure that you're going to face. It's about how you're going to bounce back from those failures. I talk about, I got an article that's being developed right now called Five Steps to a Great Comeback. I had to do it twice. And it works. And I'm going to put an article out there called Five Steps to a Great Comeback. You guys are going to see two versions of it. You're going to see the article and you're going to see an animated cartoon video of that article. It's coming. It's in the works. It's coming up very soon. I got ties, folks. <clears throat> Listen, I have ties to Arab money. I'm putting together a team of people right now that we got to drop a proposal to send over. And once that proposal is, is it's a, it's a, it's a uh, real estate development proposal. Once it's, once it is approved, we're talking about billions and billions of dollars of line, of line business line of credit to operate from and pay salaries and pay my own salary out of it. How did I get into that? You got to surround yourself with people who are better than you are. You got to surround yourself with people who see value in you, regardless of what you go through in your life. You show them your core and your core, it would tell everybody that you are worthy or not worthy of a certain cause. And I am in position to be around people who are multi-billionaires, multi-millionaires who are helping me get to that level. You got to position yourself, folks. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said it, man, now, I, now as I go further and further in my development and in my business and making deals, I see exactly what Dr. Dennis Kimbrough has been saying all these years. He said, if you are hanging with nine broke people, eventually you will be number 10. He also said, if you're the smartest person in your group, you need to find a new group. That's real, folks. That's just 100% real. And I'm not just saying people in your group, you're the smartest. I mean, 
meaning those you just leave people alone. I'm just saying I'm talking about people who don't want to make themselves better. Every single day, folks, when I wake up, I say thank you three times. And then after that, I think, <clears throat> what deal, which project am I going to attack first? Which one needs my attention the most this morning? And that's where exactly where I start. Every single morning, if my, any of my clients is on here right now watching this podcast, they can attest to this. When I wake up every morning, I text all of my clients and say, good morning, folks. I am up and available if any of you need me. Every single morning I do that. Do you do that to your clients? Do you make, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about pre-recorded emails or pre-recorded text messages. I'm talking about personal text messages that you simply take the time out of your busy morning and text your clients and say, good morning. I am up and available if you need me. I do that every single morning to all of my clients. Every morning. I send inspirational messages through text messages to over 50 people every morning in different groups. I put it on to see you, you see my inspiration on social media every morning. That goes out to so many different social media sites. I'm even on a social media site called VK. VK is, face, is like Facebook for Russia. I'm even in the Russian market posting myself. Go to VK.com. You can set up your account there. You'll find me, J. Hunter Lee, right on VK. You can friend me out there too. My stuff goes out there as well, folks. It goes all over the world. LinkedIn, Snapchat, everywhere I can put inspiration. Guess what? It's out there. It's out there. And you have to start thinking the same way. This is how you build generational wealth, people. Let the world know who you are. Let the world know your core business and reach out to these people. Get these people engaged in what you're trying to do. <clears throat> but it always has to be bigger than you. It's not about you. Remove yourself from the equation. My man Tyrese Gibson wrote the book, Get Out of Your Own Way. Get to to get out of your own way. Because your own way is what's keeping you broke, busted, and disgusted. Surround yourself with the right people. Surround yourself with the right people. I have so much opportunities coming at me right now. I have so many deals that I'm working on right now. And let me tell you something. These deals ain't going to be overnight. It's going to take time to close a lot of deals. Especially if these deals are worth millions and millions of dollars. I got one deal that's like worth over $550 million that I'm working on right, right now. I've been working on it for the last two and a half months. It takes time. It takes time, but you have to put in the work, folks. You have to start thinking and looking at the bigger picture. You have to start removing yourself from the equation. It's not about you. It's about the people that you're trying to help. Put them ahead of you and you watch your money put you in front of it. Mm, you, see, you hear what I just said, folks? If you put other people ahead of you, money will put you ahead of it. That's going to be the quote for Monday. Put that in the comments, folks, if that makes sense. If you put people ahead of you, money will put you ahead of it. Money take care of itself, baby. You got to learn that. You have to be patient with yourself, with your goals, dreams, and your aspirations. But one thing for sure, do not tell your big dreams to small-minded people because they will crush it. That's why you can't be hanging around with people who don't want to do nothing in their life, man. You can't. Unconsciously, it will keep you from succeeding in your life. Tell you something about somebody who don't want something in their life. People who are just a poor person can fuck your life up. Literally. You got to get them out of there, man. Get them out of there. They will lie on you, man, before God get the news. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, if they don't see themselves escalating or elevating, they will lie on you before God get the news. And before you know it, somebody been and tainted your name. They done got you in all kinds of, and man, I've learned a hard lesson on that stuff, man. I don't want to be around nobody who I, who I identify as those who don't want nothing in life, who don't want to strive in life. If I see that person as a thief, 
now have better ways of identifying people. You can call it a judge of character. You can say I'm prejudging. I don't give a damn. Call it what you want because we all judge. We all judge. Listen, <clears throat> whoever you married, you judged them before you married them. Whoever you dating, you judged them before you dated them. Whoever you hanging out with, you judged them before you hung out with them. Whoever you do business with, you judge them before you did business with them. Okay? So, with that being said, I hope this is making sense to you guys. I don't want to keep you. I don't know how long I've been on here. How long have I been on here, folks? 29 minutes, man. It's time for me to get out of here. With that being said, I want you to just like and share the video. And one bigger favor, I'm going to ask you to sing like no one can hear you. Dance like no one can see you. Love like you've never been hurt. And live like it's heaven on earth. I'm Jay Hunter Lee. I love you and the world needs you. And it ain't nothing you can do about it. So stop that damn texting and driving. Peace and blessings, folks. Have a great day.